This is Philips 992 911 Carrera S Cabriolet. Full Bose rip out, full system upgrade. Let's take a look. So like I say, full Bose rip out in this one. All speakers, rears, fronts, you know, the two-way door, the eight inch, the four inch, the tweeters on the dash, printed mounts for the new mid-ranges, printed mounts for the tweeters. We've hand fabricated the mounts for the mid-base drivers to get that offset spot on. Choose a Melee Legend seven inch mid-base in the door, Melee Legend mid-range in the door, the ML 700.3 and the ML280.3, the Melee Legend tweeter in an OEM style printed mount that's bolted down inside the dash with the OEM grill over the top. It's running Melee Pro in the rear, so a Pro 3 with a printed mount and the Pro tweeter in the OEM mount. We had to modify the tweeter ever so slightly uh, and that's in there. So the car can be completely returned to stock if it needs to be. Why you'd ever put it back in, oh, I, I don't know. Bose, Burmester, all of them in this car from an upgrade perspective, they all sound junk. I don't know why, because Bose and, and Burmester specifically, you know, they've got the power to make these things sound good, but they just don't. I think they have to capture such a large audience with that net, and then they use it to also control noise in the car. You know the story, I'm constantly telling you about how you shouldn't be using the stereo to control noise in the car, but they do, which ultimately just pulls away from the actual sound of the system. So yeah, we took this whole whole set out. Now, this is a you know full amp replacement. This is one of the cars you can actually take the amplifier out. We can use a digital integration part to get the most 150 signal from the car to speak to our amplifier, the Audison. AFM 12.14 in this because we wanted a lot more power because Philips asked specifically for it to be mid bass and mid range heavy which is quite nice it's a little bit more in line with how I like to listen to stuff a little bit uh, richer or warmer a bit more vibrant in the sort of mid range and mid bass area so yeah that digital integration box hands over to our amplifier so it's a full digital link until the amp output from the DSP amplifier analog of course to the speakers and away we go and it works very, very well. It works in terms of functionality exactly the same as the original system would work. You get in the car, it starts playing, all of your control is still there, nothing changes. It's not a, a hindrance to use, there's no hurdles. But the sound is just, just massively upgraded. Loads more energy, loads more power, loads more vibrancy from the system. It's actually a pleasure to listen to. So. It's a, uh, a sort of OEM style fit, so there's not much for me to show you in the interior as ever, but we have B-roll of pretty much everything that we've done. Also in this, there is a five inch, bear with me, it's a Bose subwoofer. Now, you know, I know it isn't much cop. I, I love the way this looks, I, I love it's massive. Just the, just the wrong proportion of roll edge. It looks like a tiny W7, but it just doesn't really perform very well. Now this is fitted in the car in a pretty hard to get to place and it plays into the chassis as a cross brace in there. It's a good design. I love it when people, and, and this is one thing that Bose are good at. They're good at getting sound from weird areas. Yeah, so they're good at manipulating sound and dare I say, tricking you into thinking that something sounds the way that it does. And they've used this woofer, a very specific woofer, into a set of vents in the cross brace between the bottom of the A pillars, all right? So there is a capacity there. I can't measure it, I can't give it to you. But we replaced this woofer. I was gonna see how this woofer worked after we re-amplify it and put our sort of DSP onto it see if we could get it to work but but Philip wasn't really having any of that he wanted it to be upgraded so we fitted the K5M or the sub 5KM from Focal you know is that what it's called yeah <laughs> so we fitted the sub 5KM from Focal which is a right old fatty it can deal with a load of power it's got a huge motor structure on it we were quite concerned as to whether we would fit whether it would fit in that area. And there is some 
it's a right old workup, but it goes in there. Nothing has to be modified or cut. Nothing's non-OEM. It just took a lot of head scratching and a lot of adapting to get it to go into there. And it does go in there and it slams for a five inch woofer, muting out everything on, uh, on the DSP software, just sort of playing it on its own because I wanted to see how it reacted with that enclosure size. And it works well, you know, it's, it's clean, quite low. You know, it's a five inch woofer at the end of the day. We can't expect the world, but yeah, it adds a load of weight to the bottom end and really helps with the bottom end of the mid base. Relieving the mid base in any door mounted mid base scenario is always beneficial. So if we can not try and aim for 60 Hertz in the door, we can really sort of relieve the door panels and vibrations and stuff like that from the door and pick that up with the subwoofer, especially when the subwoofer is mounted in front of us, we can naturally get it in time. It's much easier to get it in time. So uh, wicked 911 this, and we have packages for, for, for all 911s, not necessarily packages that we can ship out for some 911s because some of them are quite specific and they do require some in installation permanent mods that we can return back to stock but most people wouldn't want to do them on the driveway you know so we just don't allow those sort of systems to go out the door but for these in the workshop anything's sort of game for us and we've got certain stages certain levels that fit certain budgets and fit clients that may be used to a, a higher level of sound or have say a specific hi-fi set at home and they're just used to that sort of upper echelon of uh of sound really so we with three or four three or four layers you know yeah it's done and i've done my initial tuning this morning just setting up some loose stuff ready for some sound tuning it's saturday at the moment so that'll be monday uh, and then we've left the lead in there so when philip comes and picks the car up we can sit in the car with him because he, he has quite a specific idea about the way he wants it to sound so i imagine we'll end up sitting in there together uh, and d dialing in a couple of things, you know, because my ears, as good as they are, they aren't your ears. So, you know, there's always that manipulation we can do to a DSP system. And that is, in a nutshell, the reason why we use that sort of product is because it makes the whole system malleable. You know, we can bend it to the way we want it to sound. And that's the beauty of sort of DSP in a car or controllable DSP in a car, you know. Yeah, so let me show you around. I'm, I'm going to be quick and then... Uh, I'll let you go, all right? Lovely car, this. Um, but there is, like I say, there is absolutely nothing to see from an aftermarket perspective. So we've got triple deadened doors, you know, the door card, the door itself, the outer skin, baffles in here for the mid-base and mid-range. The mid-range mounts to the door. And then we have our tweeter, which is in the factory location there, just up on the dash top and the same on the other side, of course. Driver's door has exactly the same treatment. We have our amplifier, which is mounted in this area here, which is a little bit of a work up, but it is where the original Bose amplifier is. And there's a nice... Uh, a nicely sort of uh, fitted metal panel in there which we've spaced off to allow for a gap between the aftermarket amplifier and uh, and the carpet basically we don't want the aftermarket amplifier getting too warm which creates a nice channel for air to travel up uh, and you know and into the dash and then in the rears there probably uh, other than the sub probably the trickier part of the installation the Hertz Miele Pro kit so this isn't everything that's in this car, but this is some of the parts. The Miele Pro is effectively a step down from the Miele Legend. If we're putting them in the back of the car and we're getting some sort of uh, some sort of fill from the rear, uh, it tends to do around 20% of what the rest of the system does. But it, it is beneficial in a lot of applications. And then we step it up with the Miele Legends now. You know, we could go much further with the speakers in this car, and, and we do we do often go much further with the speakers in our sort of 911 systems. Whoa, hello, sorry for the sorry for the close up, but I do believe there is a top out for the amplifier that you use. You have to match these things up, not necessarily in terms of their RMS power or anything like that. You can always drive a speaker harder than it says it can be driven safely, of course. But with DSP amplifiers, Class D tech and stuff like that, uh, you probably want to level out the speaker at a certain area. And I, I believe the Miele Legend 
speaker really is the realistic upper end match for something like the Audison AFM 12.14 bit that that amplifier and those speakers will be performing sort of optimally if you go sort of you know Audison thesis or something like that with an amplifier like that you're not really going to get the gains that you're going to get when you use an Audison thesis amplifier or an Audison AV amplifier with a with a you know with a DSP a dedicated DSP so yeah they're all thought out very well to match each other of course you know you can do a system with orders and thesis speakers and uh and ap or af level amplification and then add you know if, if your intention is to add to the system over time and then you can go for like a, your dedicated dsp and av av amplifiers and things like that so there is also that point but um yeah the melee legend it's about 950, 960 quid for an active three-way set. So, you know, great value for money when you hear them. They're, they're, they're an outstanding sounding speaker. Um, but yeah, good match for the Audison DSP amplifiers. Not outclassed. They don't outclass the amplifier, I suppose, is what I'm saying. There she is. Uh, anything else that you want to know? If I've missed anything, if there's anything that's specific to the 911 that you think I could have put in the video, then uh, just, just let me know because ideally we want to give you what you want, especially if you're considering coming here, you know? So um, yeah, just let me know if you can, the comments and stuff. Anyway, wicked, I can't wait for him to pick it up. I'm Carl, it's a studio in car, and this is Philips 911, 992, Carrera S cab with one our full digitally integrated systems, and it sounds wicked. In a bit. Nine nine two nine eleven Cat Cabriolet. It's not a cabriolet, is it? Would you call it that? Yeah, it is.